Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by a homeobox gene. You should then be able to describe the role of homeobox genes in controlling the development of body plans. And finally, you should be able to describe the roles of mitosis and apoptosis in controlling body form. Now, the body structure of any organism is called its anatomy, and the anatomy of any organism changes during the life of that organism. For example, a human starts as a fertilised egg or zygote. The zygote then divides to form an embryo. And the embryo then develops into a foetus. After the child is born, it then develops into an adult. Every organism goes through anatomical development during its life. And how anatomical development is regulated is called morphogenesis. OK, I'm showing you here four multicellular organisms. We have a human, a bird, a spider, and a plant. Now, the anatomical development of all multicellular organisms is controlled by a group of genes. These genes were first discovered in the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster, and I'm showing you a fruit fly here. Now, the genetics of fruit flies have been studied for over a century. Fruit flies are multicellular organisms, and they're easy to keep. They also have a short lifespan, making them ideal for genetic studies. Now, sometimes mutations occur in Drosophila, and some of these mutations produce changes to the anatomy of the fruit fly. I'm showing an example here. In the wild-type fruit fly, there's a pair of antennae on the head. However, in the mutation, the antennae are replaced by a pair of legs. Scientists discovered that this mutation had taken place in a gene controlling anatomical development. And we now know that anatomical development is actually controlled by a group of genes. These are called homeobox genes, and homeobox genes are found in all multicellular organisms. Homeobox genes contain a 180 base pair region of DNA, which scientists call a homeobox. And the homeobox encodes a 60 amino acid region in the protein encoded by each homeobox gene. This region encoded by the homeobox is called the homeodomain. So homeobox proteins contain a homeodomain. Now, the key idea you need to understand is that the homeodomain binds to DNA. And we can see that with this diagram. This shows the homeodomain in a homeobox protein. And we can see the homeodomain bound to the DNA double helix. Now, homeobox proteins act as transcription factors. When homeobox proteins bind to DNA, they can increase the transcription of specific genes. So because they control the level of transcription of specific genes, scientists say that homeobox genes are regulatory genes. I'm showing you a good example of a homeobox gene here. This is called Pax6, and Pax6 plays a role in regulating the development of eyes. Mutations in Pax6 can result in blindness in both humans and mice. And in fruit flies, a Pax6 mutation can lead to the complete absence of eyes. Now, the homeobox genes are highly conserved. What that means is that the nucleotide sequences of homeobox genes are extremely similar, or even identical, between different species. And the more closely related the species, the more highly conserved the homeobox genes are. Now, another group of homeobox genes are called Hox genes. And Hox genes are found in animals. In order to understand what Hox genes do, we need to look at the body plans of animals. As we've seen, animals develop from an embryo. Now, at an early stage in development, the embryo begins to form layers of cells. These primary tissue layers go on to form the different structures in the animal's body. Some animals form two primary tissue layers. Scientists call these diploblastic organisms, and a good example are jellyfish. Diploblastic organisms show radial symmetry. In other words, they have a top and a bottom, but no left and right sides. Now, the vast majority of animals are triploblastic. In other words, these animals form three primary tissue layers. Triploblastic organisms show bilateral symmetry. In other words, they have a left and right side. Triploblastic organisms also have a head and a tail. OK, now another feature of animals is that they are segmented. We can see this clearly in invertebrate organisms. Vertebrate organisms are also segmented, for example, in the vertebrae of their backbone. 
OK, so as we've seen, Hox genes are specific homeobox genes that are found in animals. Hox genes are found grouped together in the genome in clusters. Humans have 39 Hox genes in four clusters on different chromosomes. Scientists believe that early in evolution, one homeobox gene was duplicated, forming multiple homeobox genes. These genes then mutated over time, giving us the Hox genes that we see today. Now, the role of Hox genes is to ensure that body parts are positioned correctly on an animal's body. I'm showing you here the Hox genes in Drosophila and the region of the body affected by each Hox gene. Drosophila have eight Hox genes, all clustered on one chromosome. Now, the order of the Hox genes along a chromosome is the same as the order that the effects of the Hox genes are seen in the organism. So, for example, in Drosophila, the leftmost genes in the cluster affect the development of the head. The genes in the centre of the cluster affect development of the thorax and the legs. And the rightmost genes in the cluster affect the development of the abdomen. OK, so as we've seen, animals show segmentation in their body plans, and we can see that in the vertebrae in vertebrate organisms. Now, these segments begin to develop in the embryo as structures called somites. And I'm showing you here the somites in a developing mouse and a developing chicken. The Hox genes determine how each somite develops, based on the order of each Hox gene within the cluster. For example, the Hox genes determine how somites form vertebrae and any other structures within each segment. Now, mitosis and apoptosis both play a key role in control and body form. I'm showing you here the development of a pore in a mouse embryo. Now, during embryonic development, mitosis takes place to produce new cells for growth. For example, between the first and second picture, the developing pore has grown. However, as the pore continues to develop, we can see that some tissue is lost. For example, the tissue between each finger. This tissue played a temporary role and is no longer required. Now, this loss of cells takes place by apoptosis. And apoptosis is a tightly controlled process in which cells receive signals triggering them to die. So both mitosis and apoptosis take place during development, and together they influence how an organism's body plan forms. Now both mitosis and apoptosis are regulated by Hox genes, again showing the importance of Hox genes in development. OK, I'm just going to finish on one final point. As we've seen, regulatory genes, including homeobox genes, play a critical role in the development of an organism. Now, the environment can influence how regulatory genes are expressed. This includes internal factors such as hormones, as well as external factors such as temperature changes. And some drugs can also affect the expression of regulatory genes. A good example is thalidomide, which was used to treat morning sickness in pregnant women. This led to babies being born with limbs which were not fully formed. It was later found that thalidomide affects the expression of genes involved in development. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the development of body plans.